Hello and welcome to this session. In this session, we will talk about transactions. And um, transactions are something that almost all database engines should provide to maintain the asset properties. So <clears throat> it's to, to put it very simply, it's like, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to make sure that, um, you know, a, a, a particular database adheres to atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability. So just to put it in simple terms, you know, we have to make sure that if there is some sort of a transaction that's happening, it's basically isolated, no other transaction interferes with it. Or, or if we update a database, uh, the engine should make sure that the database gets updated completely or either rolls back but is not in an inconsistent state. You know, so there are a couple of rules you can read through Wikipedia uh, to just get to know more about asset properties. And um, so um, that's what we're going to talk about um, today in, in this transaction session. So uh, to put it like, you know, very simply, <clears throat> there are a couple of commands which basically allow you to uh, take control of transactions. Like, you know, you could actually um, update something and then commit a transaction or make sure that if there is some other um, error that you encountered, you can like kind of roll back the transaction. <coughs> so, sorry. So we'll basically just look at some very simple commands in this session. And um, so, so to begin with, um, we'll just consider our typical AdventureWorks database. We'll see our sales territory over here, and then we're just going to consider the same thing for our example over here. So let me just open up sales territory and select the top thousand rows. So you see that it's a very simple database, which has about 10 rows, again, the name, country code, and uh, the group, the sales information, and stuff like that. So we'll just try to execute some statements and take control of some transactions over here. So let's just start off with something like this. So to begin any transaction, you, you use the begin transaction statement. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to update something like for example update this row on the territory id equal to one i'm going to set the cost of itd as uh, say one dollar something like that just to keep it very simple so i'm going to say update and then just copy this thing sales territory and i'm going to set the cost of itd equal to one dot zero zero and then Say where, um, let's take this one, territory ID equal to one. And after these set of statements, I'm going to say I need to commit this transaction. So uh, the statement is just commit transaction. So just intend it properly. And if I execute this, you see that there is one row affected. And if I again select the top thousand rows, I see that uh, the cost YTD is equal to one. So basically what it did is that it started a transaction, ran the set of statements which I just typed in, and then it committed the transaction. So you see that those changes are actually reflected in the database since we have used the commit transaction statement. So uh, just to proceed further, we this, the second thing that you might want to know is um, something called as um, uh, how to roll back a transaction. So um, basically, typically this is used something like um, you have a set of statements and then basically you execute it and then you see that if um, there is an error encountered in the statement, you start rolling back the set of executed statements. So these things are pretty useful when you start handling errors or you know try to make sure that your, your database is actually in a very consistent state and it doesn't have any incorrect values. So you, we, would, we would also look at, uh, uh, you know, certain um, statements that SQL provides us. Like, for example, we have the error statement that basically gives us a error number, uh, depend, error number of the last executed statement. So basically, if it's zero, that means um, it has executed successfully. And if it has actually some number, that means the last statement execution did not succeed and it, it had some error with it. So what I'm going to do over here is let us try something like, <clears throat> um, let's try updating a primary key over here. Like for example, we'll try to add a row which basically has territory ID equal to one. So this is going to create a primary key conflict and uh, let's see how we resolve that. 
So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to declare a variable called error results. <coughs> Sorry, as back error 50, and then I'm going to begin a transaction. So I'm going to say insert into sales territory. And I just need to give him the column names. <coughs> so let me just quickly copy this and then paste it over here. And I'm going to say values, just some plain thing like territory one, name as a ABC and then country region code as say US. What else? We have group as again say ABC. And then sales YTD as say 1.00, sales last year 1.00, cost YTD 1.00, cost last year 1.00, and I'm going to just copy our row GUID and let me just try to make some changes so that you know it's just unique and these are the values I'm going to insert into it and then and then I'm going to just capture the last error code so you know I'm going to just store the last error code in this variable that I declared and I'm going to say at the rate at the rate error so this will basically give me the um, you know the error value of the statement. This is the last transaction that it executed. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to say is if <clears throat> the error results is equal to zero, that means, you know, uh, whatever statement has been executed has been successful. So I'm going to say um, begin. And I'm going to print out a statement called success. And I'm going to commit the transaction. So pretty simple. Like, you know, what you're doing is you're just checking if the last statement execution was successful. And if it was, you're printing out a statement and then committing the transaction. Pretty simple stuff. So next, what you're going to do is else. I'm going to say begin. And then I'm going to print out a statement called statement fails and roll back. And then I'm going to just roll back the transaction. That's it. So let's try executing this. Specify the where clause, the number must match. Okay, let's see where we did the mistake. We have name, we have country region code, we have group, sales YTD, sales last year, cost YTD, Okay, I missed out the date. So let's try that one more time. It says cannot insert explicit value for, okay. So this must have been set to a identity column, auto incremental identity column. So basically it's not allowing me to insert anything into the primary key. So let me do something like set entity insert um, the table name on so this basically this statement um, you know just tells SQL that even if the identity um, you know it, it being an identity column you know, allow me to just insert into that column and do not auto increment it for me so it doesn't basically check at this point of time uh, whether it's a primary key and then you know there, there are duplicate values or something for that we have written the error handling code so let me just try running this again so um you see that this was the error that it threw and then basically our l statement executed and then you see that the statement failed and rolled back statement has come up over here now, if we just try to select the top thousand rows at this point of time, you shouldn't see the new value that we try to insert at this point. 
so you see nothing is affected you don't see the name equal to abc and stuff that we just typed in over here just because it was rolled back uh, another thing that i want to tell you is um, many times you might want to have a custom error message so so for instance say you have an asp.net application and you're trying to call um, a sort procedure which has these kind of uh, checks in it, you, you might want some custom error messages to be thrown to the user. So uh, the statement for it is basically called raise error. And then basically you wrap it up in parentheses, whatever you want, and then um, you know give the severity and stuff. And then basically this is going to raise this error um, um, th this custom error which you have just given to basically the calling procedure. So let us try to run this again. And you see that, you know, uh, there's a level 16 state one error message. It's basically the custom error message that you have, um, you know, just given. So yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much um, it. So the, the calling transaction can get this message and then they can process it however they want or find it necessary. One more thing I want to show you is the same um, transaction and error handling can be used in try catch statements instead of if else. So let me just quickly type some code for you over here. So it, the, the try catch is basically the same as it's provided in any other language like C sharp or something like that. It's basically, um, you know, a, a set of statements that you put in try block gets executed and then if at all an error and is encountered, it can, you know, run, it basically jumps the, um, the flow of control to the catch statement where you can have any sort of exception handling that you want. So it's pretty much the same. So the syntax for it is begin try and end try. And the statements that you put between these two are basically the ones that it's going to uh, try executing. And then if there is an error, it's going to jump to the set of statements that you have encapsulated in the catch, catch block. So again, let's just take the transaction example. So I'm going to say begin transaction, and then I'm going to copy the same primary key conflict code so that we generate some sort of an error. And I'm going to say begin catch or just one more thing. So if this succeeds, I need to commit the transaction. And then I'm going to say begin catch. And I'm going to say if there is an error, just roll back the entire transaction for me. And then I'm going to just print just to make sure that a catch block executed. I'm going to print something like catch block executed and transaction has been rolled back. Simple stuff. So let's try executing this. So you see that you now when we try to insert that it actually caught the error and then it tried to uh, like you know execute the catch statement and just roll back so if we just select the top thousand from adventure works right now you you don't see the new row getting over here just because there was an error and it, it basically rolled back the entire transaction so i hope this session gives you a very brief idea of how you can utilize transactions so um, so yeah, whenever you have stored procedures or any other thing that you want to to actually design, um, this is a you know useful set of statements that you can use in order to handle your error and try to know whether basically what what you need to do in case there's an error you want to roll back or you want to do something else or you know that kind of stuff. Uh, but one 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 warning that I would like to give it to you is. Um, um, if, if you do not use transactions effectively, that could essentially, um, that may enter into a deadlock. There are ways how you, sh you can detect a deadlock and even SQL has its own ways in which basically it detects a deadlock victim and then basically rolls back or kills it or whatever. So, um, you know, using profilers and other deadlock graphs, you can actually pinpoint what is a transaction that is causing a deadlock and actually work on it. I would really encourage you to just read up on that. It's just simple stuff um, and then you should be able to get through it. Thank you so much for watching.